Welcome back to PSC's Tech Bar. First of all, I want to remind you to subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. And today I'm going to talk with you about the dynamic form control available in the family of PMP reusable React controls uh, for SharePoint framework. The dynamic form control is really useful whenever you want to create an editing form or an add new form for an item. And it will become really interesting and useful when we will talk about creating custom forms for list items in SharePoint Online in the episode 213. The dynamic form control allows you to configure a target list ID and list item ID so that it will be able to render that specific item in the form and it can save for you data of the item if you will update data and of course it will also be able to load the data in order to make it possible for you to edit and save it. There are other interesting properties like uh, disabled fields which allows you to select which fields you want to disable in the automatically and dynamically generated form, as well as a bunch of events which will be triggered before submitting the save of an item, after the item has been saved, or in case of any error while saving an item. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me explain you how to use this control in action. This is the official documentation page of the dynamic form. As you can see here, you have a sample of how to use it, as well as plenty of information about the available properties and events. Now, let's make the assumption that we have a custom list that I've just created for the sake of this demo, in which I want to edit items and specifically have one item that I already created. And every single item in my list, if we go to the list settings, will have a bunch of fields, like the title indeed, as well as a numeric field which will be required, a boolean field, a person field, and so on and so forth, for most of the uh, data fields, uh, data type fields that we can use uh, in uh, SharePoint Online, including the taxonomy field, uh, which will target the managed metadata service. So, when we edit items using the regular UI of SharePoint Online, for example, by clicking on the Edit button, we have this form, which is the out-of-the-box one. Now, let's assume that we want to create a custom form in SharePoint Framework, in the SharePoint Framework web part, to edit that item. Well, here it is, and it is automatically generated using the dynamic form control. So if I will refresh this page just for the sake of showing you the load of data, you see there is a, a loading delay and then we see the form automatically generated with all of the fields. I can play with my items and I can configure the fields. You see this numeric field was a mandatory one, so I see we have validation in place. I can provide a new value for this field and, for example, I can change the taxonomy field from Microsoft Teams to, let's say, Microsoft Viva, just to change some data. Now, let me press F12 to show you what will happen under the cover. And now, let me show you that when I will click Save, my custom web part well, will notify me with an alert. This is custom code that I uh, wrote. And we can see in the console log that we have the properties that we changed in the current item. So the numeric field, the date time field, and the taxonomy field. And we can update that item and we get back a confirmation of the update. If we look into the object that gets uh, retrieved by the uh, dynamic form control, we can see we have uh, only the fields that we updated uh, in the item. And if we look uh, at the network, eventually we can see that we have a request uh, to uh, get the item or to update the item when we do that. So let me switch to the code of this sample solution to explain you how to use the dynamic form. First of all, I have the web part which has a couple of properties, the target list ID and the target item ID. You can configure those properties with whatever technique you like. For the sake of making a really simple example, I decided to use those properties as uh, actual properties of the web part. And then I provide those properties together with the context of SharePoint Framework to my React component rendering the actual dynamic form component. 
In the React component of my web part, I import the dynamic form from the SPFX controls React library. And I also say that my dynamic form will rely on the context that I've got through the properties of my React component, as well as to the list ID and list item ID that I have in my properties. I can eventually configure the disable fields property to disable some of the fields in the UI of the form. I can determine if I want to get back, and this is the default behavior, to return the uh, list item that was uh, submitted, saved on the target list as the result of the submitted event, on submitted event, and I can configure all of the events supported by the component, which are the on cancelled, which will be triggered when the user will click uh, on the cancel button. You see, you click cancel. And it will be on before submit uh, when the user is going to submit something to save. And right after having saved the object, we will have the on submitted or in case of an error, on submit error. Those are the signatures of the methods. We don't necessarily need uh, to implement all of these methods because internally they already do what we need to do. But if you want to trigger custom events, custom code, or see what is happening under the cover, it is really useful to uh, dig into these events and see what's uh, uh, going on the wire. As, as you can see, I don't have any actual code to save uh, my item on SharePoint because it is the dynamic form that using PMPJS internally will save uh, the item. And in fact, uh, now I said that I wanted to have 25 as the value of my numeric field. Let's say that I want to have 50. And I previously said that I wanted to have Viva, Microsoft Viva is one of the values. So I can go back to my list, I can refresh the list, and we will be able to see that now we have 50 as the numeric value, and we will have Microsoft Viva as the new value for the taxonomy field. So this is a really powerful control to build dynamic forms with SharePoint Framework. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.